Welcome to the Path Monk Presents podcast. I'm really excited about today's episode. Today we're talking with Mark Di Massimo. Uh, he is the founder and creative chief at Dogo Brands. Mark, welcome to the show. Uh, thank you so much. It's great to be here. Uh, it's it's, uh, it's actually a Digo. Uh, uh, Digo Brands, Di Massimo, Goldstein. Uh, Digo for short. We're always in a rush. Our clients are always in a rush. So we have a four short for everything. <laughs> and, and I'm sorry, we talked about just before the show, I live in Germany, so my English and German and then pronunciation, I mean, this is, this is terrible. But let's just talk about something that, that's great and talk about Digo. What do you guys do? Uh, so uh, Digo uh, builds behavior change brands and, um, and does behavior change advertising and design. So uh, we're, uh, we're at 25, we'll be uh, May 5th, Cinco de Mayo. Uh, we will be 25 years old. Uh, I founded the agency in 1996, back in the, the 20th century. <laughs> and you know, the whole idea that I had uh, was that, um, that there was just gonna be this amazing uh, f- boom of direct to consumer uh, businesses and services because of technology um, and and uh, that people will get to will be able to use these businesses and services to change their behavior in their lives um, so you know my thought was these businesses are going to need a brand partner you know they'll, they'll they're gonna need somebody to really help them build their brands and businesses and someone who really understands uh, what's different about a behavior change brand? What's different when you're trying to do a, a membership or a subscription as a service business, or you want to make you know uh, e-commerce a healthy habit? Uh, so we have clients like um, Weight Watchers uh, is a client, Echelon Fitness, which is connected uh, fitness, uh, you know wellness like BetterHelp, um, you know behavioral. Um, and behavioral health, behavioral and mental health, um, health care, uh, and, and on and on, education. Uh, all, all these things where people don't just, you know, aren't best served just by making a single product decision, but they're best served when they form a habit that they really want to form. So, you know, we work on habit-forming marketing for habit-forming services. And, you know, our ethic is... Our values basically say it has to really be good for the end user. It has to be good for the customer because we're really good at what we do. <laughs> so we don't want to create habits that, are, that aren't really going to serve that end user or empower them. Yeah. So, so if you have a big brand, how do you, do you still use um, normal means of, of client acquisition like digital media, SEO, or are you guys mainly referrals now? People just know the brand. Well, you know, it's a, there's a, just a wonderful intersection of, of the two, really. I mean, I, I think you, you know, the, anybody who thinks in, in a B2B context that, um, that they don't have to market, that they don't need to worry about their website, that they don't have to worry about their funnel, that they don't have to worry about, um, a, you know, a, about marketing because they, they have referrals, because they're, they're already known. Um, you know, I just think that that's just, that's totally wrongheaded. I think people misunderstand how their friends hire them. I have found, uh, like, yes, most of our business comes because someone who's hired us and loves us hires us again, or because someone who's hired us and loves us refers us to somebody else, or because somebody on LinkedIn or Facebook or Instagram realizes through the social network that they know somebody who knows us and so they can get that reference. So, so I would say 80% of the time that's who hires us. But when do they hire us? They hire us when they're afraid someone else will. So it's when our marketing is working really well that the people who already know us think, oh my God, they're hot. I got to get in now. <laughs> it's social reinforcement that, uh, but, and then experiential reinforcement when they're going through that funnel and they're having, I mean, let's say they know us, but they know a two years ago version of us or five years ago version of us. 
and and they want reinforcement that oh it's still as great today or maybe it's better today they go on the website they have this great experience that responds to them you know that that um that delivers those sort of micro experiences that fit the mindset they're in right now the stage they are in the in the funnel process and they they think wow these people get it you know that this i want this for my brand that's what i need a prospective client to say so we can't be lazy and, and we can't uh, rest on our laurels much as you know i guess we could have a lifestyle business with the tail end of careers people coming back to us but you know to win that new business and always be on the on the cutting edge of behavior change we absolutely have to have a great website and we absolutely have to have great marketing thing is uh, about the website if you were to say yeah, if you were to think critically, right, marketing, marketing people, they always have a, a small list of strengths and a long list of things where they're like, ah, oh, we could just improve this. If you could improve one thing on the website, would it be your ability to convert the uh, customers or quality of leads, the user experience? Where would you feel like if you could improve your website or maybe there's something you're already doing to improve the website? Yeah, there's, a, there's, a, there's an intersection of both. So uh, right now we're actually in the process uh, you know, heading toward our, our, our 25th anniversary in, in business where we'll be relaunching the brand and relaunching the website. And it'll be on a more powerful uh, platform. Ours, is get, ours has gotten pretty old and rickety. And it's, it is sort of one of those, those uh, you know, it's served us well for a long time. No one's complaining. Uh, well, you know, we're complaining. Uh, <laughs> we really, there are things we want to do to improve it. So we're currently in the process of working on that. You know, I, everything, what, what drives us is the question, what would the most creative behavior change agency in the world do? So what would the most creative behavior change agency in the world do with its website? And, you know, for me, I feel like we've got to integrate AI in order to make sure that whoever visits that website, they are getting an experience that is inspiringly connected to what their intention is at the time. And that's responsive, like a really empathetic, sharp, prepared person would be at least, you know? You, you get into a conversation, depending on what the person says or does, or also where they look, how, how they sound, what, what references they use, uh, a, an empathetic, smart human being or, or a great salesperson um, responds, adapts. Um, and you know, web, you know, websites can, can do that now, as you know. Uh, so I want to have that great experience and I want, I want them to feel a sense of admiration for the creativity. I want it to be noticeable, not you know, in an inspiring way, maybe a humorous way at times, but also in a way that respects that the user is, it has, is, has no patience uh, for time wasting and, and, and deserves the best experience so they can get to the solution they want. Coming, coming back to what you guys do and for everyone listening, what would you say you guys, I wouldn't say do better, I would just say do differently, right? What, what, what helps you guys stand out among other agencies like yourself? Well, you know, I, it's, there, we, we, have a, we, have a, um, we have a core model, and I would say we have a couple, of, a couple of most important sort of core models that we work from. And so I, I think, you know, the uh, agencies, uh, you know, agencies sort of have the, the hammer nail problem, you know, like that, that consultants often have, right? You know, their, their core competencies are the hammer, you know, the tool that they have. And, and as a result, everything looks like a nail to them. And, you know, I've, I've really felt from the beginning that that word agency um, ought to be taken 100% seriously. That, you know, uh, agency psychologically means I have the power to, to affect my destiny. And I think when a client hires an agency, they want more power to affect their destiny. So to me, I feel we have a responsibility not to do what's comfortable for us, 
not to you know just serve what we do best but to really serve the client so for us you know we have these we have these two tools that keep us on track um one you know one is something it's, this is open source anybody can do it uh if they would and that is just the brand concept so a user wants to reinforce something about their own identity when they choose a brand you know i buy a nike because i want to just do it i buy an apple because i want to think different i want to be a creative person and express myself and, and lean into my differentness um and you know but but so many decisions are made without that brand concept in mind. So when I asked that question just a couple of moments ago, what would the most creative behavior change marketing agency or behavior change agency in the world do? Um, I, I, we find and teach our clients, what's the core question for them? You know, what's the core question that should drive everything? At Nike, it's, is this authentic athletic performance? Is this inspiring the athlete and everyone you know and so that's the question it follows them wherever they go and then secondly the second part is really about what really changes behavior and and that is motivation and momentum in the moments that matter so the moments that matter you you'll connect with this that is about the journey and understanding what those key moments are in the journey and so then you, you know, you understand what they are, you prioritize them. And at each one of those moments, you ask what's driving motivation and that ought to be connected to that brand idea, but also it's connected to what they want to get done there, how they want to feel there at that moment. And then secondly, how do you create momentum? How do you move them through it? So this is where, you know, dynamic personalization of experiences can, 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 can really help. Because you know when you when when you or your technology discerns the the intent of the user at that moment and helps them along in the process, um, you're you're providing and you yes you're improving the experience and that's important, but you're also increasing momentum, speed through that experience. It gets them to what they what they want to get to quicker, which helps the marketer. So the three M's, we call it, three M's of behavior change marketing. I kind of put it together from a bunch of different models. Um, you know, working, you know, I looked at behavioral science, behavioral economics, all of my direct response and experience design and history. And, you know, I sort of integrated those things and said, what's most important? And, and, and that's it, the three M's. Cool, yeah, very insightful. I just want to pick your brain for a second. And, and thinking about challenges that come up with marketing. So when I say, thinking about those challenges, when I say the word innovation, what would you say is the biggest challenge? Um, I, think the, I think the biggest challenge, there, there are two. So it's hard to pick one. Um, I think the biggest challenge is that the world keeps changing so fast that it's easy for leadership teams to think that just running the core of business and saving the core of business um, and, and working in the core of business is, is all they can do. And innovation is about stepping up above and out. It's about looking forward. Um, it's not just about reacting. Yes, you need to be responsive, um, but it's about that. So I think that's probably the biggest the second biggest is, um, you know, there's a concept from Martin Seligman, you know, 1974 or 75 or whatever called learned helplessness. Um, and, you know, the, the idea that, um, for example, uh, I think it came from a, from a laboratory insight, which, that, uh, which was, a, it was sort of a cruel experiment. Uh, it was dogs um, and they were in cages and they would, slightly electrify the floor of the cage, the dog would jump to the other side. Um, well, what they found is they only had to do that once. If there was never electricity ever again, if it, if, if it was associated with a bell, the dog would jump for the rest of its life to get away from that electric. So we, 
we kind of learn limits and they become unconscious. And I, I think that's actually probably the biggest issue for all time with innovation that we're unconscious of our own limits. We stay in our lanes and we don't actively explore what those boundaries are. So what part of our process is to really innovation. We have it's inspiration, innovation, and activation. So we really have ways of helping clients see beyond those limitations, those self-imposed limitations. Um, yeah. So just, I just want to switch gears here for a second and talk about you as a leader. Um, what kind of content do you consume to continue to educate yourself? And like you said, this is a, obviously marketing is such a, such a growing in the world in general is such a fast place. Um, what do you consume? How do you stay up to date or even a step ahead, a half step ahead? Uh, well, I love this podcast. Um, so I do, li I do listen, I do listen to podcasts. Uh, I belong to, uh, to, uh, Vistage, which is a, a global sort of organization with a bunch of, you know, you sort of local groups of, of business, uh, leaders of various sizes and types of businesses. Um, I'm very, uh, I'm very into, um, really every, every discipline. I mean, I'm, I'm a, just a intense student of um of conscious leadership positive psychology um you know i just i feel i i you know i've been doing this for a long time i don't feel finished as a leader yet i don't feel you know i don't wake up every day and say you are a great leader mark you don't have any that you're perfect you don't have anything else to change i think I'll, you know a, a emotional intelligence you know i you know, I, sometimes I get pressured. I might shut down comments in a meeting or whatever. You know, I, 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 being able to be somebody who is a human being and saying, oh, you know, I don't know if I created the most creative environment in that meeting. Probably wasn't that inspiring. Um, but I heard you and I want you to know that. And let's, do, let's, let's start from there and do it, do it better this time. I think I want to model the way I would hope everyone else would act when they get power. <laughs> so, that, you know, if I, if I can stay humble and, and work hard and care about, you know, how I show up for other people on my team, my hope is that other people uh, will do the same. And I mean, I just, I work with great people too. They're so inspiring. Uh, they've been great through this whole pandemic. Uh, just amazing. And we're just growing, you know, we're growing, um, we're growing exactly as fast as we want to grow. Like we're saying no to stuff. There's a waiting list. So that's pretty cool. Nice. Yeah. So since we're slowly coming to the end of the episode, um, I don't want to end yet. I, I do want to give you the rapid fire questions. I want to take you down that, take you down that road. I hope you're all right with that. Great. Great. Okay, so just short and sweet, right? First thing that I answer as quickly and honestly as possible. Sound good? Sound great. Okay. Mark, what was the last book that you read? Uh, it's right here on my desk, All the Powers of the Earth by uh, Sidney Blumenthal. I'm an Abraham Lincoln um, addict. I mean, it's like my Bible. <laughs> Very cool. Uh, what's, the, what's the single thing that your company is focused on at the moment? Uh, becoming the most creative behavior change agency in the world. If there were no boundaries in technology, what would be the one thing you'd want to have fixed for your company? If there were no boundaries in technology, I would want every moment of every experience to be a, both a delight and a heroic adventure for, for, for our people and for our clients. Every moment, you know, uh, just, 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 full of wonderfulness. Amazing. Amazing. Most people actually, you know, that, that's a, such a great, I, the question is really nice because most people actually go to like, you know, like, okay, we'd be able to analyze people and understand what they want right away or something like that. But I like that you, this is, this is definitely, that's definitely a great answer. Probably my favorite one. It, Thank you. Going to jump back in. What's the last thing that kept you awake at night about your company? Um, you know, unfortunately, I'm not being kept awake at night with anxiety uh, uh, so much as as I'm waking up with ideas. You know, I'm really I'm I'm I, I'm more excited about our mission than ever. 
I, you know, I recently turned the, uh, the chief executive role at the company over to my longtime partner uh, um, and, you know, very close uh, friend, Lee Goldstein, um, so that I can really, for the first time, it, with undivided attention, dig into how we become, you know, the, the most creative, <laughs> the ever change agency in the world and our intellectual property and our services and the experience we provide clients. So, you know, I, I wake up with ideas and it's exciting. What, if you were to start over again, it's been a while, right? You said you've been almost 25 years at the company. It, what would be the one piece of advice that you give yourself? Um, I, would, uh, I would say uh, uh, be a little bit more extroverted in, in the way you, you learn right from the beginning. Um, you know, I, was, I had that entrepreneurial thing. You know, I could learn so fast by myself from books and then websites and and all of that. And of course, I was, I was spending a lot of time with clients and creative people in the agency. I, I didn't start joining outside groups uh, until, you know, maybe eight or nine years ago. And that really accelerated, you know, those interactions really accelerated my learning and my growth. So yeah, if I had it to do over again, I would have started with that earlier in my career. All right. That was Mark. Um, from digobrands.com. Mark, the, we always give our guest the last word on the show. So if you feel like there's something that you would want to say that, um, that maybe got left out, or if you just want to sum up everything that we talked about, I just want to give you the floor for a moment. Feel free to say whatever's on your heart. Uh, you know, if, if you're a marketer out there, think about whether you are just trying to affect preference or whether you really want to create a lasting behavior change. Are you selling a habit or a membership or a subscription, or you just want to change, you know, one decision? If, if, if you are a behavior change marketer, you are a behavior change marketer. And my final word is thank you. Thanks so much for having me. Thanks. Thanks for being on the show, Mark. It was great.